with yeah. the president's uh, comments last night. He went off about MAGA again. Yeah. Um, he MAGA King. Yes, King he MAGA. He referred to, to uh, former President Trump as the ultra MAGA King. He's been decrying ultra MAGA Republicans and saying he's going to be doing it more. Mm -hmm. um, but Hillary Clinton expressed some regret not too long ago uh, for referring to Trump voters as deplorables who couldn't be redeemed. And considering that Trump got 74 million votes in the last election, I'm just wondering if this is the best strategy for Biden to win people over, win over support ahead of the midterms, especially given his inaugural theme being America United. Well, I would say that the president is not afraid to call out what he sees as extreme positions that are out of line with where the American people stand. And whether that is uh, supporting a tax plan that will raise taxes on 75 million Americans making less than $100,000 a year, or whether it is uh, supporting efforts to overturn Roe v. Wade, something that two-thirds of the American people in, in a Fox News poll, may I add, supported. Um, and there are countless examples from there. Uh, the president believes that there is still work we can do together. The Bipartisan Innovation Act is a good example of that. Uh, but again, he is not going to stand back and stand aside while people are pushing for extreme positions that are not in the interests or supported by the vast majority of the American people. Of ultra MAGA. Now, you saw Representative Lee Stefanik saying, I'm ultra MAGA and I'm proud of it. Former Trump super PAC uh, blasted out a t shirt of him as an ultra MAGA Superman. Um, he, on his own Twitter alternative platform, released a meme of him as the ultra MAGA king. I guess I'm curious what the administration makes of Republicans and the former president sort of co opting this and, and elevating what President Biden clearly intended as a pejorative. Well, I, I think if that means that uh, the individuals you mentioned are embracing their opposition to a woman's right to make choices about her own health care, if they're embracing a plan that will late raise taxes on uh, 75 million Americans, if they're embracing the importance of fighting Mickey Mouse over virtually any other issue, I guess that's their platform. Good for them. We're happy to have a debate about that. Go ahead. Okay, so just to make sure that I have this right, when Donald Trump or any Republicans attack women, the LGBT community, people of color, immigrants, Democrats, the poor, that's okay because they never said they'd try to unify the country. But when Joe Biden offers the apparently very insulting phrase of MAGA King, because he promised to unite the country, then right to the rescue comes Fox News, demanding to know whether that was the right move or whether that's gonna alienate people. Apparently, if you say you wanna help and then you offer even the most tepid criticism, then you're a liar and tearing the country apart. But if you actually try to tear the country apart, so long as you didn't promise to unite people, then you're totally in the clear because, hey, at least you didn't misrepresent yourself. The fact is, the bad part here isn't Biden committing the crime of saying the words ultra MAGA. The bad part here is what the ultra MAGA agenda represents, which is a Republican party completely untethered to the will of the people of this country. A Republican party stripping women of their reproductive freedom, a Republican party banning books, a Republican party that's inciting coups, a Republican party that doesn't believe in Democrats' fundamental right to even win elections. I'd say that if I had to weigh which one is worse, Joe Biden saying the words ultra Ultra MAGA agenda versus the actual ultra MAGA agenda, it's pretty damn clear. And of course, Republicans have two options here. They can run away from the label and all that it encompasses, or they can embrace it, which is what they're desperately doing to try and show the left that they will not allow the Democrats to brand them and control the narrative. And so now, what you're left with is a bunch of Republicans saying, you know what, we are the ultra MAGA party, and hitching their wagons to Trump and his agenda, who, I should add, just lost the last election and is a guy whose approval rating sat in the 30s for the entirety of his presidency. It's a guy who decimated our standing in the world, who coddled millionaires and billionaires, who allowed the pandemic to rage in this country to the point that we had 20% of the world's cases and deaths despite having only 5% of the world's population, and who ended his presidency having incited a mob to storm the Capitol because he couldn't get over the fact that he lost. So yeah, for all those Republicans who are trying to show the Democrats that they won't allow the words ultra MAGA to be co-opted by the left by tying themselves to that guy, uh, you really showed us.
The simple fact is that the GOP is putting its priorities on full display. While Democrats are trying to pass bills lowering the cost of insulin and prescription drugs and childcare and pre-K and legalizing marijuana and supporting those fighting for democracy in Ukraine, Republicans are not only voting against all of that, they're also actively tying themselves to Donald Trump. Hell, that's the only thing they do support. That's what they stand for. Not helping Americans or easing costs during a period of global inflation, they are for pledging allegiance to the guy who demands total fealty for from his lackeys. So if your priority is more about helping Americans and less about joining a cult of personality, then maybe steer clear of the party currently shilling for a self-proclaimed MAGA king. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.